Kids and cadets, welcome back to Tommy Time. Thanks for coming out. What we have here is a Power Smart with a production date of May of 2020. We're going to do a carb clean on this because I got this in a, a package deal for 70. I ended up buying like four or five mowers. This one, I was surprised it kicked off and stalled so we know we got some bad gas or a plugged up carburetor so this is a cheapy cheap 144 cc engine it's made in china amara sun incorporated i didn't know that was the um, importer i hadn't seen that on these machines before but it's got a Distant cousin here, another power smart. Somebody's taken the liberty already of um, stripping it down in that package deal. I got that Honda side shaft engine, another crafty, and a Turo recycler. And this. Uh, I think it's a yard machine by MTD. I'm, I'm going through this one. It's got a pulse -a jet carb. I'm doing the carb right now. Just spray painted the block while this is drying in the sun. I thought I would get you guys. And uh, we do a quickie quick clean. I've messed with a couple of these in the last few years. I don't know if I've ever shown you a carb clean, but I'm going to do it today three Phillips heads on the um, recoil, recoil cover, three Phillips head screws, just loosen those up. You want this off to the side because I want to remove the tank. The tank is just notched here on the recoil. I'm going to leave the recoil in place, do a carb clean, dump the fuel out of it, and uh, put it all back together. I've got some fresh non-ethanol fuel close by so hopefully I'm prepared for this project and uh, I don't have to run and grab any other tools two 10 millimeter nuts right here need to be removed I'm going to use my DeWalt 18 volt to speed things up these are quite easy to remove these uh, carburetors I know oh, I do remember messing with one of these and um, one of my um, or a viewer I don't know if he was a subscriber gave me holy hell because I didn't do anything else to the machine sharpen the blade or check the plug but I had put in the description carburetor clean and um, I messaged him and then I said, uh, I, I just said I was going to do a carburetor clean, not a full service on the unit. So I'm not sure what his problem was. And he gave me hell for using a, a broken hose here on the uh, primer bulb. But I remember that deal. I um, was able to stretch the hose enough to get that to work. I don't know, maybe you wanted to see more than what I was offering. So this just pops off. There's your two hoses, your uh, primer hose right there. These came off easily without damaging them like the last video. And your air breather hose here, exposing this beautiful Chinese-made carburetor. So we're going to remove the fuel line. Well, why don't we take it off all at once so I'm not getting a bunch of stale gas on this beautiful deck. So we'll do that. I'm going to take it off all at once. Lift up on the tank here. They kind of mimic um, the newer Briggs and St Stratton style. There's a, a tab here you have to push back in order to get the, the tank up. Kind of like a safety tab so this thing doesn't move sorry i'm showing you my armpit but i need to manhandle this okay so that's off to the side gonna remove the 
throttle slash governor linkage. The um, chokes seem to be stiff here. So I'm just opening the choke full open and uh, pushing up on the tab, that'll come off. There's no way to screw this up. It goes back in the same spot. So this, um, this looks kind of tweaked. I am looking at the uh, distant cousin and it is kind of on an angle. The, uh, the Briggs are more upright than this And it's in that number four hole on the cannibalized unit, so I'm not going to mess with anything there. Rest my linkage up on the breather tube. Go ahead and um, give this a little bit of a pull. Taking note how these gaskets are set up back here. So just by looking at it now, I can see there was a lot of water in the intake here. There's a bunch of yellow snot here, and there's a bunch of yellow crud back here. The two studs are rusty back there, so water's been sitting. Okay, so I'm going to leave. Oh, yeah, it's... We might have to blast this out, remove the plug, and get rid of all this water. It's just dripping out of the intake here. Let me use some needle nose. Yeah, water's dripping out of the dripping out of the carburetor. Rusty water. So we got to look at the bowl. We might not even be able to do anything. This carburetor bowl may be a an orange juice factory. We're going to find out. Give the hose a twist to break the tension. And a little bit of a pulley pull. That's off. Now let me put this in a container. I've just got a Folgers coffee container here. Let's Try to see if we can see anything in this fuel. It's probably not the cleanest place to dump it. I'll blast this out with some compressed air. Let this sit while we mess with the carburetor. It's kind of hard to tell, but I, I do think there is a layer of water down there. It's darker than the rest of the liquid. I could put this in a glass jar and really tell, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I see a layer, extra layer of goodies down there at the bottom. What will really tell us is the bowl, once we open up the carb bowl, so a lot of rust here, you could see that. That's why the um, throttle was kind of stiff when I was moving it. It had been rusted, rusted shut. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the uh, torch brand plug right now that's one thing i didn't bring out and i'm going to blast some compressed air through here to try to get rid of some of that moisture so what else has been happening with you guys any big projects how are sales going i just sold um three units here in the the two days so I think uh, my season's starting to get off to a good start mostly bargain hunters people have been asking for discounts I've been just um, giving them discounts just to get the ball rolling as we 
get into full-fledged season here I won't be as generous but these early buyers I've been knocking some money off the um, pricing the plug looks good it's your standard torch brand the F5 RTC which I think um, you can get a champion RC 12 YC is a, an equivalent to this but you can google this uh, part number and then um, put in alternatives or cross-reference and it'll give you a bunch of NGK and Champion Autolite numbers. I don't have a lot of faith in these torches. Okay, uh, getting my compressed air. I'm going to I got to put a clip on the handle up there so I can um, pull my recoil and kind of get this thing to open up the valves. And I, I think I can do it manhandling it. there I got the uh, intake valve open okay so I'm confident I got a lot of moisture out of there. Let's um, blast out the uh, gas tank real quick and I'll move you over here to the flat spot of the tailgate. Like I said, I was surprised this thing kicked off. I, I didn't really want it, but he kind of threw it in with the um, distant cousin machine and that Honda engine, so I ended up taking them. I didn't know it was going to be a runner, but we'll, we'll see here in a minute. So 10 millimeter here. Let me put a, an old rag down because this is going to drip some gasoline. 10 millimeter, I'm going to... Um, use my impact we got orange juice already you can see that coming out of the bowl oh yeah we got orange juice city here some slime but very little rust, so I think we can proceed with this, clean this up. Not too bad. You can see the layer of uh, liquid that was in the bowl. It kind of stopped right there. It's giving itself away as far as the uh, red ring. So, yeah, gasket looks fine. This is only, like I said, a 2020 model year, so I, I think uh, we're good just getting rid of this watery substance so i got these uh dual purpose brushes i got these from um, dollar tree i think in a three pack i'm just going to go through the bowl here kind of scuff up that rust a little bit in the slime yeah, bowl's in good condition no rust through so we just ended up having a little um, water. Either they 
use regular fuel and it attracted the water or they have a carry jug that they um, let get water in it. Coming back here, this settled down, you can see the uh, distinctive layer there at the bottom. So we had 20% uh, water and the rest of it was fuel. So the water ended up separating just sitting here into the container and then you could get your uh, two different distinctive uh, layers i'm going to get uh, i was going to get some fine sandpaper and smooth this lip down but it, it's not even rough it's just discolored there's no no roughness here what i may do since this is still kind of grimy i'm going to get my uh, carb cleaner and get rid of that residue and then we'll do a quickie quick on this i um We'll probably remove the uh, slow idle jet circuit just so I don't have to do the job twice. We'll clean that out, do a little bit of um, clean up with carb clean and put it all back together again. So <clears throat> kind of check the out. Uh, weather radar because it was starting to get a little dark and I think we'll be okay as far as thunderstorms. If it does start raining, I'll uh, call it quits and run inside, but I think I can get this done in a short order. Okay, so I, I have a lot of confidence this is going to start. I kind of know right away just by looking at the bowl how much of a problem we're going to have. And then the uh, bowl nut, if this is really rusted up, I know I'm in rough shape, but this has just got a little bit of surface rust. Okay, so these two things are clean and ready to go. Let's move on to the uh, carburetor. First, Green Lady and I have got to discuss life and life's complexities. Hold on. Okay. We're going to come up with some solutions in the near future. Um, why don't we go ahead and take out the um, main jet small screwdriver. I have a good feeling it'll come out easy. Sometimes with an older machine, they get gunked up in there, but this, this should come out with no problem. Put a little torque on it. Okay, just drop down under my rag. I'm going to come in here to the throat and just push down on that brass emulsion tube. Look at all that water that just popped out of there. Grab my hook pick, stick it into the throat inside of the emulsion tube and just uh, coach this thing along. Or coach it out. Okay, it just, just dropped out. Bunch of water droplets in there. Okay, we'll put this to the side for the moment. Inspect this, all your little um, holes in this brass piece should be free and clear. I think our issue was with water. I'm just looking at it now with the naked eye and I don't see any any blockage. If this was a 10-year-old well abused with a lot of rust in it, I would have to poke through these holes individually with a bread wrapper wire. So that's that's done. 
take my main jet. I can see daylight through the hole. So I don't have to do anything with that. Normally you'd take the bread wrapper and clean out your hole. That's done. So there's a couple different ways of doing this, taking out your um, set screw for the speed, idle speed here. This needs to be removed in order to get your uh, jet out. Since there's so much dirt on this, I can go ahead and um, use the dirt as my guide. The, the second way of doing it is count how many turns you turn this in until it dead ends and then that way you know where to back it off when you put it back in you you dead end the screw and then back it off the same amount of turns um, the other thing you can do is um, take any colored nail polish that you desire I've got three different colors. You can make a mark here where the dirt is and then bring your threads into that mark when you put it back on. The nail polish also helps to uh, mark a reference point. If you're doing the um, turns in, counting the turns in, you need a, a spot here to start with so you could uh, use this top mark there as your starting point. I just marked the top of the uh, screw here. So when I screw it in, I'm counting how many times this little paint mark goes by that notch there at the top. So three different ways to doing it today. I'm just going to Follow the dirt mark here and the threads kind of eyeball the other side. I see two threads sticking through. That's what I'm going to do because I didn't use any carb cleaner to get rid of any of this dirt. So that's my way of doing it. And you can see that the difference in thread up here is clean then you got a bunch of dirty threads down here that's what i'm going to use slow jet just pops off there's nothing holding it down except for that set screw so it doesn't look too bad down there you want to blast some carb cleaner through here some compressed air and then there's your brass jet there you want to make sure that's free and clear. If it's not, your engine will surge up and down, up and down, up and down, because it's not, it's not getting any, any action out of this jet. So this is free and clear. I'm just going to blast some air through it. Like, like I said, I think water was our issue, not plug jets. So that's done. Gonna blast some air through there. A bunch of droplets just blasted out. Little carb cleaner, it's running right through the hole. So we don't have any blockage and it just poured out the bottom. So I know we're clean. going to come over here, do a little bit of um, blasting with carb clean. That went through, it poured out the bottom. I know that's open. This goes through to the idle jet hole. This one does. So that's open. And I don't recognize this one, but I'll blast it anyway. And it's pouring out of somewhere on this side. So that's free and clear. 
a little bit of compressed air. Blast some compressed air through my float valve there. And I'll, I'll blast a little bit up in here to get rid of this um, orange juice debris. Then we'll start putting it back together again. going to take my brush, the um, carb cleaner really didn't do anything to that orange juice ring. I'm just going to manually take it off. Try to get some rid of some of that rust ring here. I'm confident we got rid of any water in this thing, and I don't believe we have any blockage. Let's go back up here to our idle slow jet circuit. We cleaned out the little brass jet there. That goes down. Push that down into place. Take my set screw, get that started, and I'll, I'll keep an eye on the um, dirt track, which I can see from here. Watch the dirt track. One more turn, and there we are. Look at the two threads on this side that poke through. So that's back together again. Let's um, put the brass emulsion tube down. Next, the long stem part here is the part that sticks up through the, the throat that goes in first. So shake that down into place. It's, it's down. You can see it popping through the bottom of the carb. Now my main jet, drop that into place. Screw that down, but don't um, get crazy on torquing it. Just snug it down into place. Okay. So the bowl's clean. Kind of make sure everything here looks free and clear. Um, this is the front of the carb. That's where I want my drain port to be so I have access to the drain, carb drain. So something like that is how I want it set up. I'm looking at it through the side right here. Ten millimeter. I'm gonna take the um, 
10 millimeter off of my DeWalt and um, hand torque this because I want to be able to feel what kind of torque is getting put into this thing. So just snug this down. Okay, there we go. So let me bring you back over. We'll hook up the throttle slash governor linkage. I think uh, everything has been put back. I don't see any extra parts on my orange juice rag. So we got our plastic block first against the, the case. We got our paper filter that goes in. Bring my linkage down, turn my throttle to full open and put the linkage in place. It's free and clear. Everything is moving as it should. I want to put my uh, fuel fuel tank on next and then um, this will go back on. See all the, the water here that had been sitting in the bottom of this. Okay, tank is next. Your um, two slots here, you want to push this down into the slots. I'm going to get my fuel line started here. And then continue pushing this down till it clicks with this tab. Okay, it's down all the way. Finish pushing the fuel line on. Grab my needle nose. Finish putting that on. Something like that. You got to kind of watch these tabs where it doesn't interfere with the box because this thing will be poking straight out and you'll have a big air gap here because it's not flush. So it's sticking out about three millimeters here. I don't want that. I got to bring this down. So it is out of the way now. Let me um, blast this a little bit, get rid of some of this stuff down in here. Came without the cover, like I said in the um, initial video, I have two other hyper craps and I probably will steal a cover off of one of those units. I think the two units I have, the issue with those is um, they, they need coils and I didn't want to spend money on ignition coils. Because these things aren't that popular and I think they want a lot for the uh, coils so I figured I would just wait around for a junk machine to show up unfortunately the cousin of this one somebody has swiped the coil already okay put this on what I'm looking for is my primer hose make sure that goes on the red bulb nipple and my air breather hose make sure that goes on so we're nearly we're nearly done this thing we just gotta put fuel in it put it on the ground and pull and go okay i'm putting the um the primer hose on all the way ok 
Okay, so I think we're looking good. My two 10 millimeter nuts. We got a legion coming into town. He uh, beat the thunderstorm. He seems to be doing a fine job of piloting that aeroplane. Okay. Just snug these down. Nothing really on this thing needs to be over torqued or extremely torqued other than the uh, blade blade bolt and probably the um, flywheel nut. All this other little stuff, it's plastic. You don't want to crack it. Okay, time to put the um, crappy recoil on but before we do we'll put the torch back into place the torch plug bunch of moisture just blew, blew out of here so i think we dried out most of this condensation and water that was in this unit so kind of wondering if uh, fuel sent this to the uh, junkyard, bad fuel or contaminated fuel. Oftentimes I see people using bad fuel out of their gas jugs. They have fuel from last year sitting around. They don't buy non-ethanol. They end up with half a quart of water in their gas jug they um, tip it into the tank here to get every last drop out of the the uh, jug and then they just contaminate the tank okay now we're going to use a phillips head put those three screws back on this This power smart gasoline motor, motor essence. That's French. I don't know exactly what that means, but we're not, we're not lined up here on these screws. I got to try to get one started. All I'm getting is air. I don't want air. I want plastic. I want a plastic connection. Okay, we got we got one started. We got two started. We got three started. Picked up some uh, fresh non-ethanol fuel yesterday from Wawa. So let's uh, put a little bit of that in here. We'll put this down on the ground. This is an extremely lightweight unit. We won't use that old gas back there in the pickle jar. That was from another project. That's about half a half a tank. I ended up spilling a little bit here on the deck. I don't believe in funnels. Okay, so 
where is a good spot for you. I guess I'll do it right here. We may even do a, a trial run here on my yard. Prime it. I can hear hear air moving. Hopefully it's moving some fuel with it. I don't see anything leaking out of the bowl. Nothing out of the fuel line. So I think we're good. I'm going to try pulling on it. So not bad for a turd. Let me get a handle for the clip. We'll do a little dry run here on my front yard. I just moved the um, wheels to the highest position when it was on the deck uh, tailgate here. So I think we should put this piece of crap to work. Turd, excuse me, turd. You've got to use the correct terminology. Okay, let me let me get you set up and then we'll start this thing. So 2020 Power Smart fuel, contaminated fuel was our issue. Quick carb clean, about 45 minutes of me jabbering. We ended up <clears throat> getting this turd to start. I didn't have any, um, any idea this was going to be a running machine. He kind of threw it into the deal. I think we ended up with... Uh, either four or five potential units for 70. I didn't even include this one as a possible runner, but we had seen it fired off with happy juice in the initial video. So this was a good prospect to plow ahead on. The uh, cousin junk machine, I'm gonna grab the trap door off of that. I won't sell it with that safety hazard. Exposed blades are a no-no, so oil change if it needs it, probably does. It's a three-year-old unit. I, I'm guaranteeing they uh, didn't do any 
kind of maintenance to this and uh, the blade sharpening. And I'll steal the cover off of one of the junk machines I have. So what else? I was going to show you something else on this. Okay, it was four. I ended up with four complete ones. This was the fifth complete one. So I gave basically four for 70. This fifth one here was a, an added bonus, this 144cc machine. The um, Amera Sun Incorporated. So it's got a cancer warning pregnant women shall not drink gasoline what else reproductive harm may result so there you go that's all i got for you thanks for sticking around for 46 minutes as always, tip your waitress and wait staff. I'm going to finish up on this project and then go back and start uh, finishing up on the Pulsa Jet project. I was just kind of waiting for the um, sun to dry out the uh, paint here. And I got the recoil drying in the sun and the uh, gas tank. I spray painted that so that's drying as well. So, yeah, paint's dry. I can go ahead and um, start working on this project next. So I'll have two out of the uh, five here fixed up momentarily. The, um, the best looking one of them all, this MTD made yard machine, the uh, 21 inch cut. This is uh, 2017. I kind of messed with this thing earlier and um, the, the engine shot. Valves were fine. I kind of got zero compression. I took the um, keyway off. There was no damage there. So I'm thinking it's an internal issue with um, maybe the cam, cam gear is, is um, not doing what it should be doing. So this will be a parts deal. The um, frame and the body I'll use for another project, throw another engine on it, put this one in the parts um, section. Anyway, that's all I got for you. It's starting to get breezy and dark. I think we got a thunderstorm rolling in. I'm going to get you guys inside before the lightning starts to flash. Have a good day. And again, tip your waitress and wait staff. They really depend on you. Have a good day. Thanks for stopping by.